So how much should you spend on speaker cables? Well, have you ever heard of the placebo effect? It's real. You can be healed by the placebo effect. And your ears can enjoy the placebo effect of spending a lot of money on speaker cables, if you believe. So really, whether or not your speaker cables are good or not depends on your beliefs. So, with that being said, I can't tell you if it'll make a difference to you, but I can propose the question, do you believe it'll make a difference to you? And if you do, then I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to assert that probably yes, it will make a difference to you. Uh, some people they need like absolute lockdown if I don't see it in a measurement, it does not exist. That being said, not all measurements existed before. There will be new measurements developed in the future. Just because something can't be measured doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I know. I'm throwing away thousands of years of the scientific method because I want to spend money on speaker cables. I'm a shill. You caught me. If you're concerned with measurements, check out Gene De La Sala's video, Audioholics is the name of his channel. I'll link it below. Uh, I guess he was uh, in the industry of, of high-speed data transmission over long distances, so he knows a thing or two about measuring pieces of wire. Basically, uh, what Gene's conclusion is uh, that you just want to use a higher gauge, uh, which is lower numerically, uh, wire, and um, you're good. You're good. Use copper, not copper-clad aluminum. And you can tell, when you pick up a piece of wire, aluminum weighs nothing. Copper weighs more than double what aluminum weighs. So um, you'll know right away. You know, my ideology is, since a lot of my vintage amplifiers are made in Japan, I love using speaker cable that was also made in Japan because my belief system is that the Japanese manufacturers that made these great amplifiers would also be the best people to buy the speaker cable from. So there are two main brands uh, out of Japan for do-it-yourself speaker cable, and that's Mogami and Canary. Uh, I used to use the Mogami a lot, which is uh, model number W3103, and what that is is a two-conductor, 12-gauge, and it's insulated. It's got like a dielectric, uh, you know, stuff inside. It's twisted, all that stuff because uh, it's Mogami is all about studio use which is another thing that makes me think it must be pretty good um, anyway that's three or four bucks a foot but you know recently I've reading up on uh, you know the cheap audio man uh, Facebook page join his patreon and uh, the canary uh, 4s11 seems to be popular so I started using that because that's four 14 gauge conductors and if you twist together two of those four 14 gauge conductors, they turn into an 11 gauge conductor. So you end up having two 11 gauge conductors that way. I'll show you uh, how I do it in a little bit. And it costs half as much as the Mogami. Mogami. So it's like a buck fifty to two dollars a foot. Uh, so, you know, if you believe that this is good speaker wire, then follow along and I'll show you how I terminate it. If you have or have had a grandmother then you probably have heard about her famous cookie recipe. And just like grandmothers, audiophiles have their own do-it-yourself recipes for speaker cables and interconnects, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about speaker cables and I'm going to give you my cookie recipe not for cookies but for speaker cables. And this is Canary 4S11. Alright, so we're going to cut off a generous length of the sheath, and you'll see why a little later. Try not to cut into the inner uh, insulators. I think we did a good job here. Turn the lid off. Look at flush cutters. And we're going to pair these up. 
Okay, now here's the cool part. If somebody were to trip on your speaker cables or uh, you were to pull on your speakers and not, you know, you forget to detach the cables and your leads touch together, you know, that shorts your outputs and you could blow a channel. But there's a way to mitigate that risk and that's to make it so if these do get pulled they don't touch together. And we do that by making one shorter than the other by about the length of a connector. So if this is down here and they pull out, this one's going to pull out and just touch the insulation on this other wire. So what I do, I just take, uh, you know, the length of my uh, connector here and subtract that. So I'm going to cut this bad boy down here. Like that doesn't hurt to have one of these Klein tools here. This is a good tool because it doesn't, um, you just, it has a gauge on there and it'll cut exactly around the insulator without uh, cutting a bunch of strands. So I'm a fan of that because you don't want to lose your strands. Now for peace of mind I put on a rubber glove so I know I'm not getting uh, oil on the connections there from my uh, sweaty fingers. And also you can hit it with a little quick dry electric cleaner if you want to be extra thorough. And at this point, you don't put that on yet. Put on your heat shrink tubing. Right. Now. And we have one. Nope. No, we don't. <laughs> Can it be saved? Let's try doing the other side. Remember, remember it's a hobby. So it's supposed to be fun. Now we give it a tug. Oh yeah, that's on there. That's double on there. Alright. Now I'm going to struggle to get this heat shrink tubing on. And quickly give up. And get some bigger heat shrink tubing. They can't touch one another. And that's gonna, uh, that's good. All right. <laughs> Just move the flame rapidly so you don't get any weirdness in your heat shrink. Or invest in a heat gun. I mean, it's not really an investment. What the hell else are you gonna do with a heat gun? Now let's say you're panicked because now the red wire is longer than the white wire or the negative wire. You can just make on this side the corresponding red wire shorter, the same length shorter, and then your wires are the same length and you can sleep soundly. So these cables are supposed to be for a vintage amp, uh, and a lot of times, you know, they're for small gauge because um, I don't know, they just don't they just don't fit. So I'm gonna have to take these down a little, but um, you know, I have other wires. Since these are relatively inexpensive, I can have some that you know fit my small amps and some that fit. The fancy ones. So I went from 14 gauge to 11 and then necked it back down to 14 here.
And now they should fit nicely. Yep. And kind of. Okay, so these are two separate speaker wires uh, because, you know, I'm going to leave one end unterminated in order to fit into smaller um, receptacles or whatever. Uh, but here's a little trick on this side. On your speakers, the terminals are going to go negative, positive, negative, positive, something like that. So then this is your left speaker and right. And so uh, what you want to do is make... If you made this red one longer on this side, you want the white one to be longer on this side. And then you can see if I cut this red one down, about the same as I did the others. Then when you hook it up, it just more naturally leaves less strain on your wire. So if you don't have gloves, you can always use a doggy bag keep your uh, connectors clean and I'm gonna look at how the flats are on that side so then we want the flats to be opposite on this side Just solder the tip so that it doesn't fray, but I like to keep the uh, you know the length of it just bare copper because I'm superstitious. And that's it. Hey guys, I hope you like that one. I want to thank anybody who watched my last video, commented, subscribed, liked. That was a bigger response than I was expecting. Uh, so of course I have to thank Randy and my friends over at uh, The Cheap Audio Man. And just want to let you know this upcoming week production is going to improve and I hope to uh, continue cranking these videos out and uh, once again thanks for watching